Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey Way with net.touchplus.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at Typekit, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, this really isn't going to be a tutorial because, to be honest, this is going to be my very first glance at Typekit. Uh, so it'll either be popular or this thing is just going to crash and burn and be completely boring, but we'll see how it goes. So, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Typekit allows you to use any font that you like uh, by using their service. So we're going to be taking a look at it. I actually got my invite a couple weeks ago, but I've been so busy I haven't even signed up yet. So I thought it would be fun to do a screencast and uh, see how intuitive it is. These services live and die by how easy they are to use. So technically, I should be able to sign up and be working with this instantly. And if not, you'll be able to see right away what problems there are. So it might be kind of fun to watch. So here is my invite. I'm going to go ahead and click on the link and I'm going to sign up. I'll use one password to fill an identity. I agree to the terms and we'll save my login. I'm using one password by the way just in case you guys have a question and let's see what plans they have. They have a personal plan, $24.99 a year. That's really pretty cheap. Uh, it gives you a, some bandwidth, trial library so you can actually have a full library might even be worth upgrading to the full portfolio. Uh, the free one, let's see, it allows you to use one website and only two fonts per site. We're going to do this for now, but I'm thinking if I like it, it probably would be a smart idea just to do the full portfolio. So I'm going to click Sign Up. Your transaction is being processed. Okay, welcome to Typekit. So let's see, installing, we're about to ask for a do domain name on which you'll use your fonts. You can add up to 10 URLs for your site, including localhost, so you can use your local machine to do development. That's good to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Get Started. And we'll call it Jeff. I'll do this on my personal server. And the domain name is going to be jeffrey-way.com. A kit lets you configure the font selectors and other settings that Typekit will apply to your web pages. Start by giving the kit a descriptive name, then tell us which domains. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Install JavaScript. So copy the code below and paste it into the pages on your site where the fonts and setting. So this is this is a really smart thing that most of these services do is they limit your fonts so that they can only be used on a set number of URLs. You'll see this uh, very often. Even services like Kufon uh, allow you to limit it to the domain just for the extra security. So make sure it goes in the head tag. So what I've done here is I've created a blank test.html page and. We're just going to follow the instructions. So looks like we're importing uh, the type kit JavaScript file, and then we're calling try. We're going to try to load it, and if we catch any errors, we just won't do anything with those errors, but we will catch them so that no um, error messages show. All right, let's continue, and you're all set. Now go find some fonts. Okay, and these are, I believe they have much more, and from what I hear, they're adding more every day, but these look like, uh, with the free account, these are the ones we have access to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick something really bold, because sometimes uh, people use fonts that are really nice, like this looks like a nice font, but you're not really going to be able to tell, especially on a low-resolution screencast. So we're going to grab, uh, let's look through here, let's grab a font that really is noticeable. Yeah, just something like this. I would never use this, but it's very easy to tell. Let's use this one, Sicrivano. <laughs> so we're going to click see view, and it gives you all the different typefaces. So let's go back, and I'm going to click add. Remember, I'm doing this for the first time, so I may make mistakes, but um, this is kind of interesting. Welcome. Here's how to use the fonts. In the left column, use the selector section to apply fonts to any HTML tag, class, or ID. You can also add the default class to your markup, then click Publish. So I guess here um, I reference a class. So let's say, um, let's just say all H2 tags. And I'm going to click Add. Okay. And then we're going to click Publish. So it may take a few minutes. So what I may have to do after I upload this is uh, just press pause for a few minutes. So before we do that, though, let's go back here and let's see if it's as simple as just adding. This is a heading to tag. And then let's add some long text really for 
no real reason. So I'm going to save this, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause. I'm going to upload this to my server, and then hopefully uh, the system will have updated. So I'm going to click pause right now and be right back. Okay, I am back. So here's what I've done. I went ahead and created a subdomain, demo.jeffrey-wade.com, and then I moved out of TextMate just to make it easier, and now I'm working on my server in Coda. So you can see demo.jeffrey-wade.com. I've created an index.html page, and I just pasted in what we created before. Okay, And that gives us this. So we are R on our server. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back and let me see if I can find it. Oh, this is the Scrivano. So what we're going to do here is, once again, we're going to add it. And I'm going to add back in that H2 because I think I removed it. Now, additionally, and this is a nice feature that I like, I didn't like the idea of having to come in here to change the selectors, but if we click on Advanced, you can see here we can embed, not embed, but we can add the font like normal within our CSS file. So we're going to try both ways. So first, I'm going to hit H2. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to click Publish. You always have to hit Publish to make sure that it updates. Now what I've been finding uh, when I just paused for a few moments is that sometimes when you hit publish it can be a couple minutes before it updates. So let's go back here and see if it's updated yet. Yeah you can see I've updated it and I'm positive that it's working correctly but we may have to wait a couple minutes so I may have to pause. Let's make sure we have everything going right. We have our H2 tag, we've imported our scripts, and We've added this a selector of all H2 tags. We've hit publish. So yeah, everything is correct. It's just a matter of, and this is one irritating thing I think. Hopefully this can be sped up a little bit because when you're working you don't want to wait a few minutes when you're sure that's right. Now let's take a look while we're waiting. Let's take a look at the way if we click on advanced. In addition to using the selector settings to tell Typekit where to apply the font, you can use the font directly in your CSS rules within with the following font family value, Scrivano 1, Scrivano 2. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure what the difference is between 1 or 2. Now, another thing we need to take a look at while I have it on my mind is we can... Remember, we're importing JavaScript files. Uh, so if you don't need the italic or the bold italic, it's extra... Look, 55K, 54. So what we might do is get rid of uh, bold, italic, and italic, and click Publish. And that should lessen how much we're bringing in. Yeah, you can see your new kit may take a few minutes. So subsets, I don't even know what that is yet. Type kit will use the following font fallbacks for users who, whose browsers do not support font face. So that's good. You could type in Helvetica or whatever you're going to use or just a simple serif. And let's go back here. So now that we know we can reference these values, we can just use them in the font family. So we could just take that, close that out, come back here, and then within style type equals text slash CSS and just paste those in and then we would be referencing the H2 tag and so we're simply saying get all H2's and change the font family to these and then you might also want to add a backup of like Helvetica something like that. I'm not going to save that just yet because we want to see if it's working. Let's go back and refresh the page now. And there it goes. So you can see what did that take, maybe uh, two or three minutes, but it is displaying. So let's see how much control we have over this now. We can select it. Let's see if we can copy it. Copies it perfectly. And what we're going to do here within the embedded styles, and see, what, I, what I'm curious about is whether we're using the font face value here or if we're actually working off a JavaScript file. So we'll find that out shortly. But what I want to do here is to... Um, font size and let's just set it to something large and now you can see it increases just fine let's set it something really large something like that so what I'll do here is uh, copy I have no idea if I'm boring you guys I very well might be so if I do I'm sorry font size 70 pixels I'm gonna save that and now let's experiment let's take this and let's try it out on Safari and I wish I had um, access to Windows from my Mac on this laptop. We could try it out in IE, but I'm pretty sure it works just fine. So yeah, it's it's nice and sharp. Uh, we will check. I will 
on the posting, I'll add images of how it looks on a PC because I just don't have any kind of virtual machine set up on this particular laptop. So let's see what else we can do here. Let's go back to Typekit. And now what we're going to do is come back to Scrivano, click Add or View. And let's see, it's acting a little strange. Launch Kit Editor. And now what I'm going to do is I'm sorry, I'm going to go back and um, I'm going to save this. And now let's do another one. And let's do H3 tags. And once again, we're going to just copy this in. And now we're not using a selector. We're actually just using the font family property. And we'll set the font size. Just once again, something large, just so you can see it. And this is a smaller heading. Save that. And let's see how quickly that will update. Coming back, and look, okay, so once once you publish and the kit is exported, it seems like once it does that, it's, it's almost instant. So we can do that as in many fonts. Now let's try to add another font. Once again, we're just going to choose something that's really easy to notice, something like this, Daniel. I'm going to click Add and Edit and see how this one works. So it looks like it re I can't remember if I got rid of the H2 tag, so each one of these windows is unique to the font you're using, it appears. Once again, we have three fonts that we can choose from, the regular, the bold. I'm curious what the difference is between regular and regular. Hmm. Not sure. Okay, so you can click on each of these. That's kind of a nice little convenience there. You can click on each font to edit that in real time. Okay, so let's go in here, and we're going to say, let's get the h1 tag or better yet why don't we just do advanced and now we can just copy that out because that way we have total control from our own CSS file and we don't have to keep coming back here that doesn't seem to make much sense so I'm guessing because I've republished it it will take a couple more minutes for that to update but while we're here let's just go ahead and add in our h1 tag and we're gonna say font family Daniel 1 Daniel 2 and then once again, something like Helvetica to have something to fall back on. Though I'm thinking uh, if we come back here, we they already set up a stack. Here I would fall back to any cursive font. I'm wondering if, if we set it like this, if this will override those settings or not, which I can check on. So I'm going to save that, and now we need to have an H1 tag. goes here and just to simulate simulate some kind of actual website let's paste that in and we'll set a font size of like 75 pixels just something really large okay let's see if that updated so let's come back to my server and it is not updated so this is one thing I'm really hoping they fix uh, frankly it's just irritating so it can take up to a couple minutes once you publish, although they do tell you it's not a huge deal, it's just a little bit of a drag, especially if maybe you're going through here and you're like, okay, well, let's try this font or let's try this font. Every time you need to wait a couple minutes for that to for the kit to export. So let's get rid of this and let's go back to Type Kit. See any other features? If they have any kind of uh, support, let's see what they offer. If it'll load. Okay, so it looks like they have a nice and healthy little uh, form here. Very nice. That's extremely important, and you can browse by tag, so that's kind of fun. You can say, let's look at all the fonts here that are fun, and you get a huge list that you can use any of these. And I believe also you don't have to worry about uh, any kind of copyright issues because any of these fonts are, as I understand it, they're open source and they're free for you to use. And I assume, let's go ahead and refresh this, by the way. Okay, there it goes. So yeah, just about two or three minutes. So overall, I really like this system, and this might be the thing I use. Uh, I've been using Kufon for a while, but this really seems easy, and that's why I wanted to do it really like, you know, uh, undoing the wrapping paper for me personally, because that's really what these things live and die by, is how easy they are to use. And I didn't have a problem. The only problem was uh, I didn't realize that you really need to wait about three minutes for that to update. But that's hardly a big deal. 
And uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and sign up for a full account. So if you guys are interested, uh, this is still in the beta. You can sign up for a beta. And let me go ahead and log out just to show you. You can see Typekit is coming soon. Enter your email address. So be sure to sign up for the beta. And as I understand it, I have five invites to give away. So if you guys really want one, leave a comment. And I don't know. I'll choose somehow. I'll select them. I'll select them at random or pick pick you guys that I like. Anyway, so Typekit looks like a great alternative to uh, things like Kufan or Cipher. D does anyone really use Cipher anymore? It's just too complicated. I don't even bother with it. But thank you guys for watching, and um, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much. Bye.